Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutaleshi Bhakti Bhakti Vedanta Swami Iti Namine Namaste Saraswati Devi Gaudavadi Pacharine Nirasesa Sunyavadi Pasyatya De Sitarine Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadat Har Sri Vasadi Gaur Bhakta Vrindam Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama, Hare Rama, 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 Hare Hare. It wasn't until after Lord Chaitanya received initiation from Ishwari Puri and Gaya, and he came back that he inaugurated the Harinam Sankirtan movement in Navadvip. At that time, amongst all of his disciples, he had given the instructions, perform Harinam every day. So they were going out, and performing Harinam. But there were some disturbances from the local Brahmanas. What is this? What are they doing? They're making, they're coming out in the streets and singing and dancing and just, they're gonna, you know, Lord Vishnu is sleeping and they're making so much noise, they're gonna wake him up. So what is this? This is not our religion. And so they started to complain to the Chankasi that these, uh, when we say upstarts, they are uh, causing disturbances. We can't sleep at night. <laughs> In fact, because we can't sleep at night, we're going to do something. We're going to take Sri Thakur's house and throw it into the Ganges. <laughs> so these, these Brahmins were what they call smarta brahmins, those were ritualistic brahmins, they simply follow the rules and regulations, but they don't worship the Lord in devotion. They're expert at the, the expert at the external principles of, of uh, pancharatriki, by, by uh, doing everything according to scripture, but they have no devotion. And most of the time they do their rituals in order to get some remuneration so they can maintain their families. <laughs> it becomes like a business. <laughs> and uh, so they were complaining to the Kazi. And the Kazi, being the ruler, he had to take some action. So he came and he uh, warned the devotees that you shouldn't be doing this, it's causing disturbances. And so if you continue to do this, I'm gonna have to take some severe action. And so, the devotees uh, remained quiet for a little while, and Mahaprabhu also. He said, no, continue to go out and do Harinam. So they did. So another time, the Kazi came with some of his soldiers, and they broke the drum and threatened the devotees and said, "If next time you do this, we're gonna plunder all of your riches and put you all in prison. <laughs> Really a strong threat. <laughs> so the word got back to Mahaprabhu and he became very up, angry and very upset and started to speak very strongly against the Kazi. Who is this Kazi? Who does he think he is? What is his qualification? He, he's, he thinks he is the supreme ruler, but he can't do anything. I've come to inaugurate the Sankirtan movement and therefore, he is trying to interfere with that. So, if he causes any more trouble, I'll take him and his whole family and destroy them. <laughs> Which he thought he was not going to become intimidated by this Muslim leader. And so, the devotees became a little bit frightened because the uh, Kazi seemed to be really strong. But Mahaprabhu was pushing him, no, let's have Sankirtan. In fact, we will even confront the Kausi, we will even we'll challenge him. We'll say, you know, you go to your scriptures and you chant your mantras and see how many people you can get to dance and chant. When I, when I chant and dance, no, well, no, everyone will dance and chant and even the birds will sing and the animals will dance. So the Lord was becoming very defiant against the Kazi. So then he decided that let's, let's give the Kazi a, a strong reaction. So they decided to 
march on the Kazi's house. So the Lord organized Harinam Sankirtan in a very powerful way. He told all the devotees to meet that night at the house of Srivas and bring torches. And they had these long sticks with rags wrapped around the top and they would dip him in oil and then light him on fire. And then they had these uh, fiery torches. And so people came from everywhere. The word got spread that Mahaprabhu was going to do Harinam Sankirtan and march in the streets of Navadvip. So everyone was there and people came from all over the universe, demigods and in disguise and everyone. And millions, said millions of living entities assembled and they all lit torches and it seemed like Although it was in the evening time, it looked like midday. Although there was no sun, the light from the torches made everything look like it was the middle of the day. And then Lord Chaitanya and Lord Nityananda took their positions in the front of the kirtan and started to dance. And then uh, Haridas Thakur was also there and Vedvaita Charya, they were dancing, Vakreshwar Pandit. And many of, uh, many of the, not, not, I'm sorry, not Vakreshwar, he wasn't there yet. He was in Jagannath Puri at the time. Um, many of the devotees just assembled and they were singing and dancing. And Lord Chaitanya began this roarious kirtan. And it was so tumultuous that it attracted the living entities all around the universe. And people were rushing out of their houses in, in ecstasy. What is this? And... They, they forgot all about their houses. They left their doors wide open and ran out into the streets to join the kirtan. And Lord Chaitanya was in really a strong mood. They were singing and dancing and singing and dancing and moving, not very fast, but towards the palace of the Chankasi. While that, people were coming from everywhere, and even the local people, they didn't care about their personal lives, their possessions, even forgot to get dressed properly when they came out. So, but the, but the holy name was so so strong that it was sweeping every way into into this ecstasy of transcendental uh, sound vibration. And some of the thieves in, in the Navadvip they were starting to think, "Ha! Ah, now everybody's leaving their houses. Here's a good chance we can really clean up." <laughs> so they went to go out and steal from the houses. But when they got close to the kirtan. The sound just brought them into the kirtan and they forgot they were thieves. <laughs> and they also joined the kirtan and started to sing and dance. And people came from everywhere. No one knew who these people were. Some were thinking they must be demigods coming. Because when Chaitanya Mahaprabhu sings and dance, he, he brings people from all over the universe to him, take part. So he was singing and dancing and singing and dancing. But there was a defiant mood in the kirtan also. Because as they were singing and dancing, um, they were angry a little bit because of what Kasi had done. And the Lord Chaitanya wanted to teach a lesson to the Chan Kasi. That I've come to establish the Sankirtan movement and no one's going to stop that. <laughs> Especially you. <laughs> so, um, for a while, not only there was two mantras. One mantra was Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare. And the other mantra was Kill the Kazi, Kill the Kazi. Come on, Kill the Kazi, Kill the Kazi. So, so they were mixing these mantras back and forth. Kill the Kazi and Hare Krishna. <laughs> And so the sound, and Kazi was at his palace and he was thinking, what's going on? And, that's, and then he was thinking, there must be some wedding, Hindu wedding or something. Because <laughs> he was far away, but he was hearing this sound coming closer and closer. So he sent his men to see what was happening. So they came and when they got close to the, to the thing to see what was going on, they started to chant too. <laughs> they couldn't stop chanting. In fact, in fact, they, they, they realized, I'm chanting Hare Krishna, and I don't want to chant Hare Krishna, but I can't stop chanting Hare Krishna. <laughs> so they were grabbing their tongues to hold their tongues so they wouldn't chant, but it wasn't working. <laughs> and though they were trying to get as enough information as they could 
to go back to the Kazi and explain that, you know, that Nimai Pandit has started this roarious singing and dancing in the streets, and there's people everywhere. But when they, when they started to go back to the Kazi, their beers caught on fire. <laughs> you know, Muslims have these nice beers. <laughs> and their beards were catching on fire. So nothing could, they couldn't do anything. When they went, ran, ran back to the Kazi, they didn't even, they, he asked them, what you see? They couldn't say anything. <laughs> they were too nervous and too scared. <laughs> they also pur purified. So Lord Chaitanya was coming closer and closer and closer. And finally the Kazi, he was getting afraid. This was too much for him. So he hid inside his house and put his guards on the outside. Finally, Mahaprabhu, after dancing and chanting for hours, they arrived at the house of Chan Kazi. All the devotees were like mad, mad with ecstasy. And they were also still chanting, kill the Kazi. <laughs> and so the Kazi wasn't there when Lord Chaitanya arrived. So Lord Chaitanya said, he called out, hey Kazi, I've come, I'm your guest. Why do you come out to greet me? <laughs> so the Kazi didn't come out finally. The Lord was persistent and the Kazi came out. He was in a very uh, nervous state, state of mind. And uh, he, Lord Chaitanya started to approach him and then there was a discussion on religious principles. Lord Chaitanya and the Kazi started to talk. And, and uh, it said, uh, why, it says in the scriptures, you, you, the cow is your mother and you, the bull is your father. So why do you kill your mother and father? That's what Lord Chaitanya said. And then the Kazi started to speak about uh, what we say, uh, animal sacrifice, that it's not actually killing, but it's, uh, it's uh, you know, giving the, the animal a new birth like that. But Lord Chaitanya actually was supportive of that whole argument, but ultimately, Prabhupada, in his purport, describing this particular discussion, he says that uh, that the uh, Islamic teachings and the Christian teachings are teachings that came in one period in history. They are not eternal scriptures. Therefore, they're full of mistakes and errors. But the Vedic scriptures are eternal. Teni Brahma Hida Adi Kapaye that Lord Brahma spoke these, this knowledge after receiving this knowledge from Krishna in the heart. So Vedas, Krishna is, he is the personification of the Vedas, and he also says in the scriptures, Vedanta Krit Vedavit Eva Chaham, I am the compiler of the Vedas, I know the Vedas, and the Vedas are meant to understand me. So, Vedic knowledge is actually eternal. It has no historical beginning. So that knowledge is, is pure knowledge. So Lord Chaitanya and Kazi went back and forth, and then finally the Lord defeated him. And the Lord was very nice to him. He just actually spoke real nice, because the Kazi kept saying, well, you know, um, uh, I'm good friends with your, you know, your maternal grandmother, grandfather, uh, Vishwa, what was his name? His term, Lord Chaitanya's eternal, uh, Chakravarti, something Chakravarti. Can't remember his name. Not. It's almost there. Anyway, they... And so the Kazi started to say, well, you know, you know, you're like my nephew and I'm like your uncle. <laughs> so the nephew shouldn't <laughs> criticize the uncle. <laughs> so it became very sweet. And finally the Kazi said, well, actually, a couple nights ago, right after our men came to your village, I had this dream. And in this dream, this this ferocious beast appeared to me and he jumped on my chest and he grabbed his nails and dug it into my chest and he said, now I'm going to kill you. <laughs> you try to stop my Sankirtan movement, you must die. <laughs> and I was so nervous and I started to pray, please save me, save me, save me. 
And he became merciful, so he didn't kill me. But he said, next time you do that, I will kill all you and all the meat eaters. <laughs> and then the Kazi opened up his shirt, and in his, on his chest there was all these nail marks. And Lord Nisringadev appeared to him and gave him some special mercy. <laughs> and then, uh, of course, uh, the Kazi had promised after that that throughout the history that will follow, in other words, from time now, none of the leaders who rule Navadweep in my family will ever stop the Sankirtan movement like that. Even today, you go to Navadweep, uh, yeah, and then that they understand that, that, uh, that even those the descendants of the Kazi family, they respect the, can, the Sankirtan movement because Kazi had promised Lord Chaitanya that he would never interfere with the movement of the Sankirtan movement. And there's a beautiful tree, it's called the Champak tree in Navadweep, it's along the road there that leads to our temple. And the chi tree is half white and half black. You've seen it, I think maybe some of you have seen it, been there. Uh, the, the white part stands for Lord Chaitanya and the black part stands for the Kazi. That they were intimately, and then Lord Chaitanya gave a lot of mercy to the Kazi. Because he promised to respect the Sankirtan movement and tell all the future generations that would rule and never to interfere with the Harinam Sankirtan. So, uh, Vrindavan Das Thakur in his uh, Chaitanya Bhagwat, he explains this pastime in 745 verses. In Chaitanya Charitamrita, it's only explained in maybe a hundred verses, maybe a little more. But in Vrindavan Das Thakur has really given emphasis to this particular pastime. And I left out a lot of the details because during that Harinam Sankirtan, which took hours, they le when they left uh, uh, Srivas Thakur's house and got to the Chan Kazi's palace, it took hours and hours. Because they weren't going fast, they were just dancing and dancing and singing and more and more people were joining the Kirtan and became tumultuous. So if we want to uh, bring back Krishna consciousness into the world or purify the world, it's the holy name that's going to do it. <laughs> holy name and transcendental literature, by distributing this knowledge in the form of Srila Prabhupada's books, which teach is the essence of the living entity's relationship with Krishna and devotion, which is the foundation for eternal happiness and freedom from all suffering. This knowledge, along with spreading the Harinam Sankirtan, because this is what made our movement so strong in the very beginning. If you see the old Back to Godhead magazines that were first published when the society started back in 1966, 67, you'll find that every one of those magazines, every page, there is Harinam Sankirtan pictures. Devotees were doing Harinam Sankirtan every day for hours. I joined in 1973 in New York. And when I first joined in the temple, they put me out on Harinam. We would go out all day in the morning after breakfast and chant on the streets all day. And on the weekends, we would do Harinam Sankirtan. With, with the entire temple. Sometimes 100, 150 devotees would go out on a week, weekend and we would just chat and chat and chat and chat. <laughs> and so our movement spread really fast from city to city. Srila Prabhupada really got the movement going through Harinam Sankirtan. And a few layers later, book distribution became very popular. I'll, tell, I'll speak about that tomorrow. And between these two, the Krishna consciousness spread so fast in the law in the United States. Not only fast, that even one 
political leader in the government of the United States said, if, if, this, if this Hare Krishna movement keeps going the way it is in 10 years, they will take over the whole government. <laughs> yeah, there was like hundreds of devotees in every temple, in Los Angeles, San Francisco, New York, Chicago, and Philadelphia, and all of the major cities and others, Boston, and there were powerful sankirtan groups that were going out. And during the Christmas marathon, the devotees would go out from morning to night and sometimes stay out <laughs> to midnight and then go out the next morning early again. So, <clears throat> yeah, this Haridam Sankirtan is Lord Chaitanya's movement. Prabhupada started it everywhere he went. And when he went to Australia, he... Uh, he began the Sankirtan movement there. But the Australian governments in cities like Melbourne and Sydney became very much averse to the Harinam Sankirtan. So they were threatening the devotees and arresting the devotees. So the devotees were getting arrested and being put in jail. Prabhupada said, no, you just continue. Let them put you in jail and you can chant Hare Krishna in jail. <laughs> So they did, they kept going, they kept getting arrested. Finally, they got tired of arresting us. And because we kept going, uh, the people around the area, many people in political offices and reporters, people who had some positions in society, started to, uh, tar started to speak in favor of us. And that put pressure on the government after a while. And so they started to give us permission to do Harinam. And then uh, that, that just continued to spread and spread and spread. And after a while, the government didn't interfere with our Harinam at all. <laughs> so, yeah. Of course, in many places around the world, now you can do it. Just like in Ljubljana, in uh, Slovenia, we're going out. We have two hours every night between 5 o'clock and 7 o'clock. The devotees are going out and doing books and Harinam at the same time. So that's uh, practically every day. Some days the devotees miss because something else is going on. But generally, it's every day now, Harinam, even in the wintertime. So, like that. So, Harinam is very powerful. It's, it's Lord Chaitanya has given it special, his special Shakti. I think those of you who went out today got a nice experience. Yeah. Even if nobody's out there, I mean, today a lot of people were out. But even if nobody's out there, still, the devotees enjoy it. <laughs> it's so nice. <laughs> yeah, so when you're in the kirtan, nothing, you're, you're outside of the material energy. Like that, so. So Mahaprabhu has, uh, has given it. Krishna, what is that verse? Uh, Krishna Varnam Tusva Krishna Sangopanga Saparshadam Yajna Sankirtana Prayay Yajanti Hi Sumeda Saha. Um, that Lord Chaitanya has come with his weapons, his associates, his transcendental attributes to spread Sri Harinam Sankirtan. And then the verse goes on. Uh, su medasaha. Medasa means intelligence, and su means great. Those who have good intelligence will engage in Harinam Sankirtan like that. So it's building again. The devotees are starting to see the importance. Just like in New York now, we have one Harinam group that's been going out for the last 12 years every day. They do Harinam every day in different spots around New York City and run by one uh, devotee from, his name is Ram Roy. I think I mentioned today a little bit about him. So yeah, Harinam is going on, so. We want to do it more and more. Imagine if the whole society and all the devotees in the entire Krishna consciousness movement were out on Sankirtan. There would be no pandemic, no there's nothing. <laughs> All the diseases would go away and all the people would be happy. <laughs> so we have the formula for changing the whole face of the world and that is Sadinam Sankirtan. 
It's not just singing and dancing. It's the highest form of glorification of the Supreme Lord in this age of Kali. It's been given that position that there's nothing higher than to sing and dance and, and glorify the Lord by chanting His holy name. Very, very, very direct, very, very powerful, and very, very joyful too. It's, there's, not, there's no austerity in it. Sing, dance, and, and when you get tired, take some prasad. <laughs> and then go out and sing and dance again. Get a little tired again, take a little more prasad. <laughs> Lord Chaitanya made that, gave that formula. It's mentioned in one bhajan. Prabhupada talks about it. He said that it, you, do, you sing, and then you dance, when you sing Hare Krishna, you feel happy, you start dancing. Then when you dance, after some time you get a little tired, so take a little prasadam, and then get up and sing and dance again. And then if you get tired again, take some more prasadam. And this way, don't stop. <laughs> so this is our formula. We have, we have the means to purify the entire world. It's just a matter of doing it more and more. We do it in the temples, but we should do it out in the streets, and that's what Prabhupada wanted. And if we, and people are seeing us, that we've been out year after year after year. We don't change. In fact, we only get better. So they give us some people who maybe at the beginning were seeing, oh, who are these people? What are they doing? Oh, it's some just some fad. It'll go away after some time. We're not going away. <laughs> We just keep getting bigger and bigger. Back in the 1970s, when Prabhupada was here, so many of the small religious groups started. All of these groups from different places in India, or different yogis and different groups were coming. Where are they now? Hardly any of them are going around, but we're still here. <laughs> we got substance. and We got the power of the Supreme Lord behind us. So we don't have anything to worry about. All we have to do is continue with this Harinam Sankirtan and book distribution. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think that you told that nice story about that former president, the president's wife who came and somehow somebody just approached her. She's been away from Krishna consciousness for a while, but being approached after some time, again, she became interested in took so many Bhagavad Gita's. So yeah, nobody can defeat our philosophy. It's not possible. There's no higher philosophy than this. <laughs> we can, as Prabhupada said, we can, uh, we can defeat anybody in the argument, whoever they are and whatever their argument is. We have, we have the substance. We just have to learn how to present it in, in a very convincing way. That's all. This knowledge is it's coming from the spiritual world. It's not coming from anywhere, not even from the heavenly planets. It's coming from directly from the spiritual world. And, and the Sankirtan movement, Goloka Premadan Harinam Shankirtan, Ratin Jan Milo Kene Upai. It's the highest form of worship. That's what they do in the spiritual world. They sing and dance, and sing and dance. The Maha Mantra is the purest of all mantras because it only contains the names of the Supreme Lord in its highest, highest manifestation. It says that all of the names of God cannot equal the power of the name of Krishna. Krishna is the supreme powerful name of God because it contains all of the attributes, all of the qualities, all of the forms, all of the names of Krishna, all, all within that sound vibration of the, of the name Krishna, so powerful. Now this, is, uh, this is the great treasure we have. But we need to organize it more and more and get out there. And the world is going through some changes and uh, people are in, uh, I'm, I just wrote something just the other day, that if you think things are going to get better materially out there, you're an illusion. 
you know, everyone's thinking, oh, maybe the pandemic will be over soon. Forget it. <laughs> it's going to continue for years and years and years. As Srila Prabhupada said, it doesn't happen by accident, it was planned. <laughs> and so they're going to keep it going and keep it going and try to make everybody fearful. And, but we have the means. People are fearful now, they're confused. And people are scrambling. Your country here, and even Slovenia, it's a little bit open. People are still somewhat able to function normally, but in other countries in the world, it's so bad that they're taking people and putting them in camps if they refuse to take the vaccination, which is against the law. They're doing that. And they're doing it in Australia. And uh, where is it? Uh, uh, Israel. Places are really so so oppressive. Austria, Austria is really bad. You know, and Italy's becoming like that also. So uh, yeah, so just like the Chan Kazi tried to stop this movement, but nobody can stop it. If we're strong and we're determined and we're organized, continue to do Harinam Sankirtan. This is when we were doing Harinam Sankirtan last year in Ljubljana. We would go out and then uh, we would have there our microphones, you know, with the, with the amplification. And so they would, somebody would come up, police officers would come up and say, well, you can't do that. You can't, you can't sing with micro with all these, you know, amplifications. So we would stop and then the next day we'd go out with amplifications again. And then they would tell us again. And then we would do it again. So it happened about 10 times. <laughs> and then after a while they were saying, can you please stop? <laughs> so we, we, we started to obey the rules that we, when you leave the temple and you go through, uh, what's the name of that park? Tivoli Park, Tivoli Park. We chant right through there with amplification. Then when we get to the center square, then we, then the devotees shut down the amplification and just, then we have like two or three people leading together. So it's just as loud. <laughs> and uh, lately people have been coming out at nights and going to bars and to different restaurants and milling around. Devotees have been doing amazing preaching in the in the evening there. So, yeah. And the books are going out. The books are going out because, yeah, people are, are struggling. They're lost. And they're thinking, we just pray things will get back to normal, but forget it. <laughs> Nobody knows what normal is anyway. <laughs> So, yeah, so keep going out. The weather's a little cold. That's, that's a deterrent in a little ways, but get, 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 when you get nice and warm and you start singing and dancing, it's, it's not so cold. <laughs> you get warmed up by the holy name. So we want to do more, not just on once a week or something like that. I know we had, don't have enough devotees to keep the temple going and do Harinam, but if we keep doing Harinam, we'll, you'll see more and more people will start joining our Harinam after a while. So Lord Chaitanya, in that pastime, if you read that and really read it in detail, you'll see how the power of Lord Chaitanya's de determination not to be, uh, well, we say, threatened by any kind of force that would try to stop the Harinam Sankirtan. No one can stop it. It's not possible. It can only be stopped if the devotees stop it. That's the only way it can stop. Right? Right, Nityananda Pran? Yes. Nityananda Pran, right? Yes. 
Prana Nitai. Prana Nitai, okay. He, he's a kirtan man. He likes to dance. So, I like that. If you like Harinam, that's all you need. <laughs> Harinam Sankirtan. Uh, this Sankirtan uh, moment can uh, be able uh, to stop this demonic globalistic plan. Yeah. 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 The demon. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, that's the only way. Yeah. Prabhupada also said that. He said this movement will save the world in its darkest hour. <laughs> And it's getting dark out there. <laughs> yeah, people are feeling the pressure of all the restrictions that are being given them. It's 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 a really confused situation. You can't if you ask anybody what's going on, nobody knows. They they hear one thing, they hear another thing, they hear another thing, and it's it's all confusing. So yeah, if we if, if we remain together, that's that's the force. Our strength is in our in our numbers and working together, and doing programs together, chanting together, serving together, working together under the guidance of leadership, and our movement is strong. And Prabhupada showed that in Australia when they tried to stop our movement. He said, just keep going out. <laughs> because he established uh, in Melbourne, uh, 1976, I think, a uh, beautiful temple. Yeah. 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 Krishna consciousness spread fast throughout Australia. Yeah, because our devotees are not, they're really not aware of what's going on. Uh, they're going along with this whole thing. I mean, I have a lot to say about it, but I don't want to get into it too much because it's, a, it's controversial. But what's going on is something different than what people are thinking it is. And there's a whole economical, political, and social change that's being being orchestrated on a high level, and they're using this threat of a, a, a threat of a, a a disease to force people into these these changes. So, yeah, it's it's all politics. <laughs> so we shouldn't get vaccinated. <laughs> No. There's no reason. Even if you get sick, there's medicine you can take. I mean, I had, I supposedly had the COVID virus last year, and I just took some zinc and rested, had a fever, and after some time I was all right. But there's, there's medicine that can cure it just right away. Like last time I came to uh, to uh, Croatia about a month ago, while we were doing a program in uh, Joyful Kitchen, and one lady I forgot her name. She's she's a member of our congregation here. She came up to me and said her mother was really sick and she's got COVID. And she's in the hospital. So I had some ivermectin. Ivermectin is the the, the uh, medicine that cures COVID just within a couple of days. So I gave her some, and somehow or other, she didn't give it to her mother, but she got sick and she took it, <laughs> and she was cured in a couple of days from it. So there's there's medicines that are available, not so available, but there are medicines if you get sick. 
So you don't need to take anything else like that, but take precautions, you know. Mm. Be careful. I mean, this is December. December is the month of viruses and colds and flus. People get sick more around this time. That happens every year. It's not just like, you know, something new. And every year people die of viruses, colds, fevers, and they don't take care of themselves. So take care. Make sure your immune system's strong. Keep your diet good and eat according to what's best for you. Exercise and stay happy and chant Hare Krishna. <laughs> and you know, you'll be free from all of these diseases. Yeah. Men tried to stop, uh, but they were purified. Rather, they were coming towards the. Yeah, the Harinam was so powerful that they couldn't do anything. So, in a sense, uh, the holy name just puts a wall around the devotees, and nobody, they can't penetrate that wall. <laughs> it's like this invisible wall of sound, that, and it's like a like a protective thing. The body should know that, that we have, if we have powerful Harinam, then, then nobody can stop it. The police might start to threaten us, but even then they'll, they'll become changed too after some time. But I don't think you have that much trouble here. You can go out, right? And usually, yeah, yeah, it's good. Some countries are different. I mean, the world is in different situations around the world. America is still good. Their devotees are going out in some places. Some places in Europe is difficult. But yeah, continue. And we want to, we want to, we want to, uh, serve Lord Chaitanya by bringing more and more people into our movement. Not that we have our little temple, we're so happy and we got everything we need. That's not our movement. Our movement is to go out and bring more and more people in. It's called paropaka. Paropaka means to do good for others. Yeah. I mean, we, we're, we're okay. We can chant, we can dance, we can read books, we can do different services. We don't have any problems. But the world is a mess. <laughs> and Lord Chaitanya has come to give people a chance to get out of that mess through this process of Krishna consciousness. So he's, uh, he's asking us to do that work. <laughs> he says that in Chaitanya Charitamrita. In the, uh, I think it's the seventh canto of Adi Lila, seventh chapter of Adi Lila, he says. He said, I have this whole storehouse full of love of fruits of love of God, and I'm tasting these fruits. These fruits are, are very sweet and very healthy. And, uh, but I'm just one person. What can I do? So please help me. Take these fruits, taste them yourself, and go out and distribute them. <laughs> so he's asking everyone to assist, assist him in this process. That's Lord Chaitanya. So this is one of the legacies that we have when we join this movement. Fine. We're not a movement of bhajan and undies where we just do our own bhajan and we just feel happy about that. We're ghost and undies, we're a preaching movement. <laughs> the whole thing is, Prabhupada from the time he began to the time he left the body was preaching Krishna consciousness. Always making plans how to kind of reach more and more people with Krishna consciousness. When Prabhupada came to London, he said, bring me some important people to talk to. <laughs> the Shaman Sundar was his secretary at the time. 
So he was going around and he had some influence. He knew George Harrison. So George Harrison had some friends. So some of those people would come to meet Prabhupada. And then uh, Shamsundar was very good at meeting some important people. So uh, uh, Arnold Toynbee, famous author, came to see Prabhupada. And certain very important people who were authors, people that, who had been to India, who now had political positions in, in England. And every day for about a month, Prabhupada was meeting all these important people and discussing Krishna consciousness with them. And then after that, Shama Sundar did a week-long series of festivals each day with categorized of important people one day it was with the politicians, one day it was with the religious people, one day it was with the rock and roll people. <laughs> so yeah, Prabhupada did just bring more people. And Prabhupada was going out too. He was always traveling, spreading Krishna. He never stopped. He never, he was like, no one even could keep up with Prabhupada. He was hardly sleeping, just traveling and preaching, writing books and inspiring the devotees and continue to distribute books and continue to spread the holy name. That's what Prabhupada focused on. Book distribution and holy name and then when things got big he opened a temple. And then temples came by way of Harinam and book distribution. That's where we got all the money for from the temple from opening temples. Yeah, so Prabhupada was amazing. He's tireless, <laughs> really tireless. One time Prabhupada said, I want to retire and go to Vrindavan and take 25 of my most senior men with me and live like Goswamis in Vrindavan. But then, he never did it, <laughs> because later on he said, I, you know, I want to just die on the battlefield. I want to be like Arjun, fighting to the end, spreading Krishna consciousness. That was Prabhupada, he was amazing. When you were with Prabhupada, you really had to be ready, because he was talking about Krishna consciousness, spreading Krishna consciousness, non-stop. Like... And he said, I, I came to make a revolution that turned a whole social, political, economic, moral system upside down, he said. I haven't come here to simply to amalgamate as another religion, no. I want to make a revolution and bring Krishna into the lives of everyone. And that's our movement. Our movement is not to just become like another nice religion where we, we're good people and we, we smile and we have our church service every Sunday. <laughs> we make sure our chapatis are hot. <laughs> Baba uh, said, we're not churchianity, but some, some of our, it's unfortunate, some of our leaders in our movement are really want to kind of amalgamate with the rest of society and just be nice, but that wasn't Prabhupada. And Prabhupada said, you're all rascals, fools, dogs, hogs, camels, and asses. Here, we're, you, you, had, you don't have any brains, so we're going to give you some brains. Yes, we are brainwashing because your brain is dirty. Yeah. He said the principle of a, of a civilized society is to cleanse. So we're cleaning. We're cleaning your dirty brain. What is that dirt? Illicit sex, intoxication, meat eating, and gambling. <laughs> so Popa was, you know, he, he was like on fire. Yeah. And intelligent people agreed with Prabhupada. Some got threatened by what he said, but. He wasn't going to compromise just so our, our movement could be popular in the world. 
That's what we're trying to do now, make our movement really popular through compromise. The compromise is not the program. We, be, we obey the laws of the state up to a certain point, but when they try to stop us from preaching or from Harinam Sankirtan, then, then our, we obey Lord Chaitanya. <laughs> That's our, like that. So continue and inspire more devotees to take part, and especially now with the book distribution. Book distribution is big. That's one thing our society is good at. We're very good at distributing books. Books are good. Harinams are a little weak, only in certain places. But book distribution is pretty much going on everywhere in the world. <clears throat> And that's one of them, that's, Prabhupada put book distribution one step ahead of Harinam. He considered that more important. But our formula, and I've seen it happen, it's very effective. You combine both at the same time. You go out on Harinam and you do books at the same time. And then that sound vibration just purifies the atmosphere and people buy books. <laughs> that's the way to get more books out. It's the, the, I was with the devotees in Slovenia last night and some of the senior devotees who were there were there from the beginning they were saying about um, about uh, 30 or 40 percent of the population in Slovenia has gotten at least two of our books uh, they, 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 they did the Padayatras for years and distributed so many books, and now they're distributing books everywhere. They go door to door on book distribution. That's their, that's their forte. And everybody, everybody's out there and just ringing bells and going to people's houses. That's their method for book distribution. And then when they go out on Harinam, then they go out with books with the Harinam. But then usually it's door to door, sometimes on the streets, mostly door to door. Mm -hmm. yeah. During the daytime. <laughs> it's the best time. Maharaj, so when, when we maybe are not able to see this in action. Is it because we don't have enough purity when we stick in the holy, holy name? Or we don't have the vision? How, how no. <laughs> when we first started Krishna consciousness, we had nothing. We were always struggling to get money. There was only a few temples. So all the energy was on. Now we got everything. The bodies are nicely situated materially. So we get a little lazy. <laughs> we're, we're a little too comfortable. And some of us are getting a little older. <laughs> so we're thinking, you know, I ought to maybe retire. <laughs> but uh, we want to inspire the younger generation to get involved more and more. But yeah, we can, yeah. That's what slowed down our movement in the United States. The devotees had, had, were pulling in hundreds and thousands of dollars, and temples were opening like crazy. And then what happened? The movement got a little, what we say, complacent. Started to take it easy. We were, we were becoming very successful. And then uh, when he starts doing that, then Maya comes in. <laughs> if we always keep Srila Prabhupada's instructions as the means for understanding and discuss his instructions to see how to practically apply those instructions, because he said so many things, but he put a lot of emphasis on book distribution, Harinam, and, uh, 
and uh, making nice temples. He wanted the temples to be nice, and the deity worship to be nice because, uh, well, not so much here, but in places like the UK and the United States and other places, they put a lot of emphasis on gorgeous deity worship. Prabhupada wanted that also, because he said if you have nice, gorgeous deity worship, you attract the Indian community. That's how they get attracted, by deity worship. And then once they get attracted by deity worship, then you can engage them in other aspects of devotional service. Then you can sell them books and like that. So Prabhupada, he didn't have just one program, but he emphasized, uh, you know, book distribution, Harinam, like that, worship in the temple. But people don't join the temple so much anymore. At least it has been that for the last few years, but now I'm seeing people are starting to come back again. And getting more and more new people starting to visit again, at least in... I saw that in America, and I saw that in Slovenia. I saw that also in the UK. Because, you know, people are starting to really, again, search for something. And in their search, sometimes they come across us. <laughs> and devotees, devotees are, are nice people. They like us, because we're friendly, we're respectable, we, 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 we have something to offer, they can see that. They may not understand it, but they can see there's something here. So the movement's moving again because of the social crisis that's out there, and it's pushing people again towards religion which is good. Okay. So maybe we can stop here. It's getting a little late. We don't want to jeopardize tomorrow. So thank you very much. Vila Prabhupada ki jai. Harinam Sankirtan ki jai. Vila Prabhupada's Transcendental Book Distribution ki jai.